Today we're going to be ranking every single political advisor in Heart of Iron Force so you know who to hire and who to fucking fire. That's right, we'll fire Hillary. Hillary, you're fired. Alright, first we have the Silent Workhorse. Now, I think this is a very, very popular advisor because, hey, it's a long term investment. Good old fashioned capitalism, am I right? <laughs> But it's also kind of overrated, because if you think about it, 15% extra political power gain basically just means 0.3 extra PP per day. And this means that it takes an entire 500 days, aka a year and a half, just to break even on the cost of the advisor. So over the entire run, you might only make a few hundred political power in profit, and considering that you're usually swimming in PP late game anyway, this advisor genuinely is not the greatest, so this might surprise a lot of you, but this is only going to go with the B tier. Alright, we have the Captain of Industry, which increases Civ construction speed by 10%. Now, this is another really overrated one, because construction speed in the game is actually additive, not multiplicative, which basically means this does not stack very well with other construction speed boosts. And also, if you're a minor nation, what's the difference between finishing a Civ this week versus, like, Two weeks later, <laughs> it's not going to make any difference. And if you're a major nation, what, if I build 50 sieves, and now I've got this advisor, I can build 55 sieves? Wow! Those five sieves are not going to do anything in the long run. I'm going to have to put this one in the C tier. This is going to shock a lot of you guys. War Industrialist. Basically, the same thing as Captain of Industry, but for military factories. Which basically means that it's overrated for the same reasons. However, 5 extra mills will take you infinitely further than 5 extra sieves. It will give you an absolute crap ton of equipment, which is always useful. So for that, I'm going to put it one tier higher in the B tier. Popular figurehead. Alright, this is one of my personal favorites because stability is the most busted stat in Hearts of Iron 4 because it gives factory output more PP gain, consumer goods. <laughs> this advisor is quite literally worker conditions but instant, even more stability and without the debuffs. Like, especially if you're below 50% stability, this advisor will single handedly rescue your production efficiency. I mean, at this point, this is basically just a combination of every single advisor for the price of one. Like, do I even need to say any more? S tier. Smooth talking karma. Why does this shit even exist? It literally just makes improving relations cheaper, but I guarantee you will never make the political power back, and improving relations isn't the most useful thing to begin with, so this thing can f*** off to the F tier with pleasure. Yeah, that's right, F for fired. <laughs> Backroom Backstabber. I mean, it's not as useless as the last idiot, but it still isn't great. Ideology Drift Defense is only ever good in MP, maybe. I don't know, I don't play MP. And the other perk might be decent-ish if you're doing a load of spying, but again, for 150 PP, the highest it can go is D tier. Next, we got the Prince of Terror. Now, I see this being useful very, very occasionally if you're, like, garrisoning a load of territory as a nation with no manpower. <laughs> But again, the numbers are just not high enough, so I can't put it any higher than D. Armament Organizer. This actually gives a decent reduction to sieve to mill conversion speed, which might be good if you sieve greed and then convert later, but I don't know if you should be doing that anyway. The supply hub construction speed could actually be quite good, considering they take like a fucking century to build. So I'll put this one C tier. It, let me know if I put this one too high. Alright, we've got The Economist, and I don't know where this guy stores his massive ass brain, because this man can single-handedly reduce the consumer goods of an entire fucking country by 5%. Holy sh! And if you combine it with total mobilization and max stability, you get zero consumer goods. And that is as OP as it sounds. This advisor is arguably the single best advisor in Heart of Iron 4, S tier, all the way. The Economist, which gives a 5% increase to efficiency cap, which basically means 5% more factory output, which is nice and all, but it usually takes quite a while for your efficiency to even reach the cap, and honestly, it's just not as good as the financial expert, so unfortunately, this guy only makes it into the B tier. Compassionate gentleman. Oh my god, not another one of these idiots. Like, do I even need to explain why this goes into the F tier? 
Quartermaster General. I mean, out of the buildings that it does give construction speed boosts for, the only one you should really be building is airports and maybe the occasional port. However, we've also learned that construction boosts aren't really that great, and also you only really need to build these buildings like once before the war, and it's just completely useless for the rest of the game, so yeah, D tier. Elusive Gentleman. Oh my god, friggin' finally we've got a decent one. If you're not in a faction, you can only get two spy slots, and this advisor is the only way to get a third. And given that some spy missions literally require three spies, if you're using spies, this advisor is pretty much a must. So, it goes into the B tier. It's only this low because you don't always use spies. Alright, next we have the Ideological Crusader. The second stat is literally irrelevant. The first one basically gives you 15 extra stability if your party is at 100% popularity. I mean, it just sounds like popular figurehead with extra steps, and you don't always get the full 15% stability, but, you know, stability is stability, alright? It's literally always amazing. So for that, it goes into the A tier. Technocrat. Okay, by now, you get the idea. Construction speed is additive, so is research speed. These numbers are unfortunately just too tiny, so yeah, C tier. And finally, we have the ideology ones. They're all decent at what they do, and changing ideology is one of the biggest parts of Hoi 4, so they are all very, very useful. However, when your popularity gets to a certain point, it takes so, so damn long to increase your popularity even more. So, they all miss out on the S tier. The communist and the naughty naughty ideology ones get A tier because they let you do some good old fashioned special military operations early game. <laughs> And the democratic one can f off to the F tier because who the hell wants to be democratic in Hearts of Iron 4? And that's my tier list for all the political advisors in Hearts of Iron 4. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe.